So, welcome to this massive ancient woodland known as the New Forest. I've come here today to shoot some beautiful autumnal colours at their peak. So, there she is, the Nightwood Oak. You know what, I thought she'd be taller to be honest with you. But the girth is absolutely humongous. And I'm going to go over and have a little closer look in a minute. But I assume it was taller and branches have fallen off over the years. Uh, but yeah, I'm not really here for the night work. It, it's nice, but it's got no autumnal leaves on it, hardly. It's still green for some reason. So I'm here to shoot the surroundings uh, of the nightwood oak. The other oak trees around it. Because um, they're a lot nicer. They've got more character. Well... I guess it's got a lot of character, but it's just, it's just uh, too, too clustered and too photographed, I guess. I want to find something, you know, different than everyone else here. Um, but yeah, I'm really here just to shoot the surroundings, so I'm not going to take a photo of the Nightwood Oak. Um, you know, but it's absolutely spectacular sight. I don't know how old it is yet. I'm going to go check over in a minute. I should have gone and read the sign beforehand so I could relay some information to you guys. So, I don't think I've had my tripod this high in quite a time, um, but I need it because oh, it's absolutely beautiful little sapling. It's got beautiful, beautiful autumnal colours uh, in the middle of the woodland here. And a lot of these trees have got absolutely beautiful colours as well. They're too high, so you can't shoot the leaves. But this is a little sapling in here, and it's just got some beautiful, beautiful colour on it. And the, the way the tree is formed, it's really, really nice as well for the composition because it comes up and it sprouts out left and right, creating a V in the middle. And it's absolutely beautiful. But, I've had to go so high because I'm getting to the sky and, and I want to eliminate as much sky as physically possible in a uh, woodland photography. And I think you guys should do that as well because sky in woodland is an absolute no-no. Um, um, I was a bit worried about getting this shot in because I've only got the 18mm lens but no, I do have the wide angle lens um, which is 10mm but it is a bit broken and I, I don't really want to change it in this weather it was a lot more convenient for me if I just managed to fit it in with the 18mm which I have, so I've got it in landscape but it really stands out because the canopy is open and this is really important in woodland photography you can get some really really nice shots of little saplings amongst really really big trees and I guess this works for all trees, but if you have the canopy open, like there's no trees above it and some an extra light is actually shining down and it's not being blocked by other leaves or other trees, then your subject instantly becomes more light than everything surrounding it. So it's sort of like it's being highlighted by the heavens, you know? You know when um, the heavens open up and you get a light ray coming down? It's sort of like that, but less intense. Um, so when you when if you find something like this, it's probably worth shooting. That's the thing with woodland photography, it is a lot, it is very clustered and you've got to deal with that, you've got to learn to deal with that and you've got to learn to find the peace amongst all this hectic cluster of trees, branches, leaves and everything. And it is, it is extremely difficult woodland photography and that's, what, that's mainly why I stick to seascape photography. It's very dark in here, so if you do want to do wood on top of it, I highly suggest a tripod, because you're going to need it. Because um, I'm at ISO 100 F4, F4, with 1 15th of a second, no filters. That's how dark it is. Um, so yeah, I've got to use a tripod. And 
Yeah, what a beautiful shot. And this rain is not showing any signs of stopping. In fact, it's getting worse. So that noise you can hear is a busy A road just over there, which is the way I'm shooting. So I have to wait for cars not to be there so I don't get a, a streak of white going through my image. Although I do have an exposure time of one second now because I'm at F13 for this shot. And I just found this beautiful, beautiful little brook that just leads you straight through this image with trees left and right. And we've got this little branch that comes down with all sorts of oranges and yellows uh, coming down from it. And then this brook is just filled with beautiful, beautiful autumnal leaves. And oh, it's a beautiful shot. There's raining leaves over there, although we're not going to catch those on, on the shot. Um, I'm on autofocus now. Two second timer. And yeah, absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm not sure how this shot's going to turn out, but hopefully it'll be all right. Um, I'm, not really sure. I'm not really sure about any of these shots because they're all a bit clustered. But this one is quite nice because We've got three trees this side, three trees that side. The trees on that side are all bigger than th these ones on this side. And then we've got this old tree that's fallen over across this brook. And the composition is very, very clustered and overwhelming. Although it is, I find it quite nice, you know? Right, so, I've come out into this field now, it's really nice and open, but, you know, it's drizzling still. And I just spotted this other woodland here, and this might be the same for this woodland from the other side. But this woodland, it's just full of so many different varieties of trees. We've got Scots pine, we've got silver birch, we've got oak. There's no ash, but ash is horrible during the uh, autumn anyway. Um, we don't want ash, but, oh, it's just so many. We've got some, oh. And <laughs> I was like, no way, this can't be. This can't actually be. And lo and behold, there's actually some heather in this field. And it's actually still alive a little bit. So we still have a little bit of colour in this heather. Jesus Christ, it's almost November and we've still got a bit of heather. I'm so surprised. But, oh, what a great surprise. Anyway, pretty much, I just want a, a pano. And I just want to pan over this canopy of trees here with this beautiful heaven in the foreground. And unfortunately we are getting some that horrible white sky in, but I can't really help that. I might try and crop it out. Um, so I probably will make two versions of this image, one cropped and one not cropped. So pretty much we're going for three uh, portrait shots, 16 by 9. Uh, the first one starting out at this beautiful scotch pine here. Absolutely fantastic. Its leaves and its bark just stand out because it's surrounded by these silver birches which have bright orange leaves and beautiful beautiful silver bark but this tree has a really really nice rich brown with beautiful vibrant green on it. I shot 16 by 9 one fifth of a second f16 I want everything in focus and then second shot is sort of center of the image and finally we're moving left of the image fantastic absolutely fantastic we don't get a lot of silver birches down in devon so 
they do quite excite me. And if it looks like I'm steaming, I actually am. Because I've got so much heat in this body jacket, the rain's hitting it, and it's sort of evaporating. <laughs> So, bringing the highlights back revealed that the sky actually had quite a bit of texture in it, so I scrapped the idea of the second cropped image and kept just this one instead. So, I was walking around this field and the Scotch pine just stood right out to me. Although it isn't a beautiful, beautiful orange silver birch, it's it's still really nice because I've never really shot a um a Scotch pine by its by its lonesome. So it is actually quite a nice shot here. Um yeah, it's surrounded by this beautiful heaven. This would be a really, really nice, you know, uh, a sunrise August shot. Although I'm here in the autumn and it's pissing it down. But it, it's still really, really nice. Because um, this rain is actually adding some sort of effect. It's it's, it's sort of like a, a light mist it adds when it falls in the background, and essentially it just it just creates some separation from the subject, which is the tree, and and the background. But I also made sure to get some autumnal colours in the background. We do have some bracken underneath the tree, um, and we've got some silver birches in the background. But if we didn't have any autumnal colours, it probably would be a black and white. Um, I think Scots pines really do work well with black and white, because they don't have much colour on them. Um, but yeah, besides that, another shot in the bag. And uh, yeah, this rain is not showing any sign of stopping. So I'm shooting F4 to create quite a bit of separation from that background. I'm focusing on the Scots pine, of course. Um, and 1 60th of a second ISO running here. So I went for a bit of a drive just through the forest and it's absolutely beautiful just through this country lane. Uh, it's absolutely, it's just stunning it was, um, but it's just one of those moments, you know, when you just want to relax and take it in, you don't want to do any photography, you just want to, you know, the camera is the excuse pretty much, that's what we all say, um, and it is, because being out here by yourself, uh, it's just it's so rewarding, because it just does so much for your mental health, I think, just being out here alone, being able to think, uh, it's just so relaxing, but unfortunately the rain sort of ruined that, um, relaxation because it was just non-stop and I just had enough I was getting super super wet so I just headed back to the car and there is one more photo at the end so stay stay tuned for that but I'm going to end it here because the conditions aren't going to get much better and I've got some good photos I'm happy with uh, and I'm going to be moving closer to the location a lot closer than where I live now down in Devon because I'll be living sort of in the Dorset area which is the neighbouring county to uh, Hampshire which I'm in now so I will be uh, fairly close, so I'm going to be coming back in the spring hopefully, maybe shoot some bluebells. I'm not sure if the bluebells grow in the new forest, and I'll be definitely back next autumn. It's just, it's just this is like the Lake District of the Southlands, and I really hope you guys bear with me. I know the quality of my videos has dropped quite a bit. Uh, I'm counteracting that with 4K, but even that, it's just, this phone's not very good for low light, and I know you guys have been complaining about the mic quality, but I, just, I can't afford you know, to spend any more money on camera equipment at the moment. Um, but I will invest in a remote mic at some point. But for now, I'm just going to have to do the, the Rode video mic, and it should be doing better than it is, really. But apart from that, I think I'm going to head out, because I'm hungry, I'm wet, I'm tired. Alright guys, I'll see you in the next one.